Uh, who better to bring in than former GM of the Atlanta Falcons, 12 seasons, uh, two-time NFL Executive of the Year, I do believe, currently the CEO of Sumer Sports. Please welcome Thomas Dimitrov, dressed impeccably as always. <laughs> Hey, Adams. Great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Great to see you. Great to talk to you. And a perfect day to do that because I think a lot of Cowboys fans are like, huh? Groundhog's Day? Definition of insanity? Get him out of here. Take a blowtorch. Streamagate the whole thing. Jerry Jones announces he's bringing back Coach Mike McCarthy next year. What do you think? Look, I was watching closely because I'm thinking about Dan Quinn, right? I was like, is Dan hanging Your there? Boy. In the rings? It, now we have Seattle open. Is Dan there? Is Dan's... I look at Dan, obviously having worked with him, thinking he's going to end up somewhere this year. And was Jerry going to hold him there and, and offer him a lot of money to stay? Obviously, it didn't happen. Mike, we know Mike is a very good football coach. Where they're going and the direction they're going, obviously, is upsetting to the, to the uh, Dallas fan base. But I think they can continue to win there, Kay. I'm not down and out on it at all. I think it's imperative that they get the right potential D coordinator to come in there, but of course, figure out what they're doing on that offensive side of the ball to make sure they can close it down in the end, right? That's vital. Okay, but then now you have, I am like, is there ever pressure on McCarthy? Is he going into this season now as a lame duck? Like he's like got the heat on him? Like what, how, how that can't feel good going into it. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm surprised, I'm, I'm really surprised there wasn't a move here because I feel like if you're Jerry, there's a very few chances you might have left at the thing. Yeah, look, I, I think that this is a tough situation. And again, we'll watch closely to see, you know, if a deal is done. Of course, more than likely, it seems as though there's not going to be. Of course, you and I aren't in their building. But having sat in that seat before, there's a lot of dicey conversations and, and what I call dusty conversations about this very thing within their building, I'm sure. What is the best way to approach this? How to keep Mike in that spot where his head is right and his morale is right? To be a lame, lame duck and to be on the hot seat as hot as it might be, that is a very, very precarious situation to be. It means that there's not the focus you want on your players and your team, of yes. course, which is important. It is. Now, you mentioned Dan Quinn, of course, six seasons as the head coach in Atlanta when you were there. We're hearing Seattle. I also, I hear Jerry Jones loves him. Like, there was potentially some talk about him taking over the head coach spot. That did not happen. What, where do you think he goes? Or where, where would be the best fit for DQ? What do you want for him? No, look, I mean, I think, I think Dan has so much to offer after spent, spending his time, of course, in Atlanta, learning what he learned about there, and now as outstanding defensive coordinator, throw away that last game. I'm not even talking about that. This guy goes into a building, K. All of these buildings, you're talking about seven openings. You're talking about some really interesting openings out there where there are general managers in certain places that would welcome a, 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 a you know, a talented and experienced coach like Dan and, and others who want the young guy, right? I mean, you're looking at Adam Peters up in Washington. Yeah. Is he going to go after Dan Quinn? Maybe not. Maybe he goes after Ben Johnson, as we think it might happen. So Dan, I think, is one of those guys, though, an experienced co a coach, that is not a pain in anyone's butt, right? He's a positive, upbeat, fiery, passionate. All of those great things about Dan Quinn that he can bring to an organization makes it palatable for the inexperienced or the experienced GM. Very, very important point. What is the best fit for him then? Look, I think, I think Tennessee is a great fit. I think okay. Carolina, as much as people are making their comments about Carolina, yeah. I mean, I'd love to see him pair with his buddy back in in in, uh, in Seattle and John Schneider. I mean, those guys go way back back to back to when we hired him in Atlanta. I mean, I spent a lot of time talking with John Schneider about him. It's not just a done deal there, though, in my mind in Seattle. I think there are other places out there that would be a great fit as well. Got to come come with a good deal for Mr. DQ Seattle. Got to get him. That's you know, Dimitrov's boy. We're talking business here. Let's do it. Uh, Atlanta. You were there for a long time. Ian Rappaport's reporting this morning. Belichick's going round two, do si -do, with uh, Arthur Blank and company doing that dance up there, down there. Uh, you know Arthur Blank better than most. Is this an owner that will gel with someone who likes things his way? In my mind, there's no question that, that Arthur Blank, I think, still one of the best owners in the league, having had all the experience he has, is, has and what he gives to the team, financially, what he gives to the head coach and provides, that is a big, big deal, right? So a lot of people think, wow, 
would he really would he really gel with with Bill with all of Bill's strong opinions about how he wants to come in? And one hundred percent, I think they will. I have no inside information. I want to be very clear about uh-huh. that. What I do know is I've worked for both men. I know both men have unbelievable uh, knowledge and insight that they bring to the table from where they're coming. One from a head coaching position, one from a from a from an owner's position. I think they both have reasons to win. People were out there talking about, oh, Bill, maybe Bill wants to step aside. Maybe he's done. No way. Bill has so much more to offer in this league. I mean, I was looking at Sumer Sports, right? I was looking at some data this morning. Okay. Bill Belichick, at, Bill added an average of 1.5 points per game above his talent, including Brady. This is a concept that a lot of people might not be able to grasp, okay. including Brady from 2000 to tw- 2023 number one in the history of the league. And that's comparing to John Harbour at 1-4, uh, Andy Reid at 1-3, and Dick Vermeil at 1-2. Like, this guy is on the top of his game still. I know people want to claim the Bill, the Tom Brady, and Tom's great. Two of the best at what they do. We get it. He's going into wherever he goes. He, I believe, is the man out there that can help bring an organization to win a Super Bowl in the next three or four years over anyone. I'm not saying others can't. But this is a man that you need to do that. And if you're an organization that are looking now and not looking to spend time to 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 build and grow into a situation, I mean, he's that guy for you, I think. He's the guy. But last time I talked to you, you said that you, that you couldn't imagine seeing Bill go somewhere where he is not. I think you used the word czar, like that he's he's sure. he's running the whole show. Arthur Smith's gone. They did hang on to their GM. Is you know, uh, if not Atlanta, and it might be Atlanta. I mean, they're doing round two here, and it's an attractive, like you're saying, Arthur Blank. That's an attractive landing spot. That division is sort of attractive. Getting to sort of help, you know, you lose me a little bit when it's Bill gets to go down there and run everything, and because you mentioned talent, he's coaching above talent, but they need talent. They need what you do. They need Sumer Sports. They need Thomas Dimitrov. They need a GM that's up to par. Is that is that happening in Atlanta? And if not, where should where would you place if you were a, uh, you know, if you were a careerbuilder.com person, a recruiter? Where would you put Bill? Okay, so those are all great points. First of all, let's let's talk about Rich McKay. Rich is a longtime football man, as you know. Rich Rich is a very smart man. He has a great relationship with Arthur Blank, and Rich is going to be very smart and appropriate on how he continues to approach his world there with the Atlanta Falcons. There's no doubt in my mind that he will do that. You know, when when you talk about a guy like a Bill Belichick coming into an organization that is firmly entrenched, there's no question I still believe what I said. Bill is coming in to be the decision maker. Let's move over to, t- to Terry Fontenot, the young general manager there. Terry is a good football man. He is obviously still young in the business. This is, you know, He's been in three years. Terry's a guy that could get along very well with Arthur, or uh, excuse me, with uh, uh, Bill Belichick, and he gets along very well with Arthur Blank. That's not one that is dusty and, and, and all over the place and, and fragmented. That's one that really at the core can be quite smoothly transitioned. Again, no doubt in my mind, Bill is coming in there if he goes anywhere, wherever it is, Kay, Atlanta, anywhere else, and he is going to run the show. Do you think the Patriots need a what kind of GM do you think the Patriots need? They, of course, have a director of player personnel. It's always sketchy. It's always weird up there. Nobody ever knows what's actually happening. What needs to happen to support Gerard Mayo, who has quite a heap of uh, rebuilding on his plate? Look, I think there are people that have been in the in the sort of Patriot paradigm before who are either in between jobs or at places that could possibly be pulled up there. I mean, look, I, I sit there and I think about guys like John Robinson. I think about, mm. you know, John Robinson is a fantastic football man. That ended poorly and bad, you know, at, at Tennessee, of course, for other reasons that people don't even need to need to worry about. He knows that building well. He knows the crafts well. He is a guy that, in my mind, even though people aren't talking about him, whether he wants to come back in or not, what I am saying, there are people that have come through that building and have a really good grasp of what is right for New England, the people in New England and such, that I think I think there, you know, that would be an interesting opportunity. For you? 
um sumer sports right now that's where i am and i'm i'm, I'm trying to make the best of this and i'd like um, to see you go up there i would be in on the pay i would be i would be in on the patriots if they if they if that was a thing you've got connective tissue i think familiarity is important to craft at this moment it's a lot of transition i feel like you know they the the issue there the more intriguing thing to me than a mayo than whoever they, is the gm spot in new england because they do you know, we can talk about all the Sumer Sports data and all of that, but how nice would it be to have a, a high level of talent and then exceed expectations on that? Look, we, we, you can't overlook a guy like Scott Pioli as well, Kay. And you know, I mean, Scott has very big ties up there and he's up and around there anyway where he's living. I just think there are some people there in that, in that, in that you know, former quiver, so to speak, that, that could really help uh, the Crafts, you know, transition a new head coach in there who's, that, believe me, and you know this, any of us in football right now, this group of head coaches that are available right now, I love this. Watching Vrabel out there, Dan Quinn out there, Bill Belichick, how many times you get a chance to pull off of some of these guys? And then you fold in, you know, Jim Harbaugh, who's a fantastic coach, and then you have two young guys in Ben Johnson and Mike McDonald. What a really cool group to be working at and looking at uh, from all of these organizations' perspective. Thomas Dimitrov, we're going to take a short break here. We're going to talk through the break because we're live on YouTube. It's a whole TV thing. Don't worry. Sumer Sports is uh, where he is for now. Wink, wink. I'd like to see you back in the NFL. I want to ask you about, you know, you're talking about these, um, you're talking about these coaching candidates. So if you're, you know, if you're Lurie in Philly, aren't, don't you want to, like, don't you want to put your hat in that ring a little? What's going on? You spent six years uh, in New England, of course, but Howie, um, you and Howie are close. He did everything yeah. in his power to get them back to the right spot, get them back to Super Bowl position. Um, and here's what he had to say about what went wrong for his Eagles. Do we have it? We don't have it? Oh, okay. We don't have it. Well, well I would just like to know then, where do you think they land with uh, Sirianni, what they should do? Well, again, you know my feeling about Howie, one of the very, very best, and he is going to go head on with it. He put his heart and soul into what happened this year, of course. Doesn't, it, it doesn't indicate anything to do with, you know, coming up short on decision-making. It, it happened. Here's what I think. I can't answer for either Howie or Jeffrey Lurie, of course, but as a GM with the passion that, ha that Howie has, and he's looking around there thinking, okay, thank you, Nick. You've done a lot of great things for us, right? We've done some amazing stuff together and yet back to what i was saying you have an opportunity out there to dig into some really really good head coaches leading with bill belichick you don't think that's on his mind every night leading up to that last game mm -hmm. and every night moving forward this is this is interesting how it plays out after if they do in fact stay with nick sirianni where does how does how he approach that hmm. because we don't know where how his mind is on that does he want to make the next step with a guy like Bill? There was a lot of talk about that. It's not happened yet, right? So uh, I still think I still think that's something that it, they're they're having that really intense conversations in that building about. In my opinion, amazing perspective, and it matters so much. Sumer Sports Show. Where can we listen to it? Sumersport.com. Look, it's I'm excited about where we're going. We have Eric Eager, who's top notch yes. data scientist, with my co-host on there. He always comes up with great information. And look. I do want to mention one last coach out there we haven't talked Tell about. Me. And I it is time for Raheem Morris to have another opportunity. Please. Ra, you know Ra. I mean, Raheem, I've, I've talked to people about this. I've talked to owners about this recently. I've talked to people in the media. Incredibly sharp. And in, 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 I mean, by the way, there's not a person out there that has a quicker response and does not ever jumble his words. This this cat is talented. He's learned from all of what he has. It's been a lot of years. He needs to be back in the ring. And I think uh, this would be a great opportunity and, and one of these op you know, opportunities to interview strong. He's getting endorsements from everyone. Yours matters. Your voice matters. We appreciate it so much, guys. Check out Sumer Sports Show. Try to, like, be, a, you know, tr a little, maybe there should be, like, a five minutes at the end where you talk to people like they're five, and then I'll understand the data and the metrics, and I can do, like, you know, like a Sumer Sports 101. Okay, Thomas? Sumer Sports 101. I'll remember that. I need it myself. Believe me. I'm, I'm, I'm always learning.